Look at this. Therefore, being justified by faith plus Huh? No, nothing. Therefore, being justified by faith plus nothing. What do we have? Peace with God. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, until we're saved, do we have peace with God? No way. We're an enemy. We're under constant conviction. But once we enter into that glorious salvation... We have peace with God. I don't have to sweat and worry and wonder, have I done enough? Have I refrained enough? No, I have peace with God. He's taking care of it, see? And we trust it. We believe it. And then verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. You don't have to be sweating out, what do I have to do next? How much do I have to give? See, now that's another question. It comes in every day. Lest do I have to give 10%. No, you don't have to give 10%. That was law. Now that's a guideline. It's certainly nice if you can afford 10% without crimping on paying your bills. But see, what comes in so often, people get hit with a devastating illness. And they're just overrun with bills and bills and bills. And then these preachers still come down. That's all right, but you give me your 10% first. And I say, no, you don't. You do not give one penny that God knows you can't afford to give. And you give as you feel God wants you to give. Whether it's 1% or if it's none for a while, that's your freedom. We're under grace. Now, if you get to the place where you can give 50%, hey, praise the Lord. I'll never forget years ago when I was a kid, old Laterno, you know, the guy that had the road building equipment, he came along, you know, bragging that he could give 90% of his income to the Lord. Well, so what? He was making $50 million a year, so what'd that leave him? <laughs> that don't impress me a bit. But you see, Paul now makes the statement in 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, let every man give as God lays it on your heart. Not grudgingly, Gosh, I don't want to give today, but I have to. No, God doesn't want that. He wants a cheerful giver. You know, I got a pastor down in uh, Florida, Baptist Church, and uh, I'd been down there three, four, five years in a row and always had all three services on Sunday, and he never gave any indication that he disagreed with me on anything. But about the fourth year, we were having dinner after church, and he said, you know, Les, there's just one area of all your teaching that I can't agree with. I said, what's that? He said, I have to preach the 10% tithe. I said, why? Well, he said, I just have to. He said, it's, it's, it's what the Bible declares. Let every man give, uh, or the uh, Malachi, you know, you're robbing God and all I said, well, Pastor Ken, I said, uh, someday God will open your eyes. I said, I, I don't want to differ with you, but anyway. Well, this was in March. I got down there the next February, and he got ready to introduce me, and he says, now, you know, my church people know this has happened, but for you, visitor, I've got to tell you something. He said, I could never agree with less on giving. I had to preach that 10% tithe, and he was always claiming you give as the Lord lays it on your heart. He said, last October, he said, I could not sleep because of one word in that verse, 2 Corinthians 9, verse 7, and it's the word, not of necessity. Don't give because you feel you have to. And finally, he said, I said, okay, Lord, okay, you've convinced me. I'll try it. So he said, I announced at a church on the first Sunday in October, somewhere back there, that we are now going to preach you give as God lays it on your heart, not because you have to. And he says, here we are six months later. And he says, thanks to that old farmer, he said, our giving tripled. <laughs> tripled. When you take them off of that 10% time. And I know it works because it's the biblical way of doing it in this dispensation of grace. You are not under that Malachi tithe. 
Now that should set some of you free. <laughs> 